Before we kick things off, I just want to express my gratitude for tuning in to this video. It means a lot to us. If you enjoy our content, please consider supporting our small channel by liking and subscribing. Your support truly makes a difference. And if you find this story sending shivers down your spine, don't hesitate to leave a comment and let us know your thoughts. We love hearing from our viewers. As I made my way towards the Ghouls Inn Hotel, the rain poured down relentlessly, drenching everything in its path. The cold droplets seemed to cut through the air, adding to the eerie atmosphere that surrounded the old building. Its gothic architecture stood tall against the stormy sky, casting an ominous shadow over the surrounding area. Gargoyles perched on each corner, their stone faces twisted into grotesque expressions. Suddenly, a bolt of lightning illuminated the facade, revealing its decrepit state. In that fleeting moment I could have sworn I saw a figure move behind one of the upper windows, sending a shiver down my spine. Determined to ignore the unease creeping up on me, I pushed open the grand, creaking doors and stepped inside. The lobby greeted me with an eerie silence, broken only by the steady ticking of an old grandfather clock. The air was heavy with the scent of mildew, mingled with a faint metallic undertone. Making my way towards the check-in desk, I was met by an elderly man with a gaunt face and deep-set eyes. His voice, as raspy as the wind outside, welcomed me to the Ghoul's Inn. I'm Harold, the caretaker, he introduced himself. I mustered a smile, trying to hide my growing apprehension. Thank you. I have a reservation, I replied, hoping to find solace in the familiarity of my booking. With a glimmer of curiosity shining in his eyes, Harold extended an antiquated key towards me. Room 444, second floor. Have a delightful stay, he said. As I accepted the key, I could feel its icy weight in my palm, sending a shiver down my spine. Making my way towards the staircase, the dim lighting created elongated shadows that danced and flickered along the walls. Each step I took seemed to awaken the building, as it groaned and creaked, almost as if it was aware of my presence. Finally reaching the end of a narrow hallway, I found room 4 Humphrey 4. The once opulent carpet now appeared worn and stained. As I inserted the key into the lock, the door opened with a mournful groan, as if it held secrets waiting to be discovered. As I stepped into the room, I couldn't help but be taken aback by its surprisingly pristine condition. The grandeur of the large four-poster bed, the elegance of the wooden dresser, and the charm of the antique mirror hanging on the wall all seemed to transport me to a different era. However, amidst the vintage decor, there was a small, flickering television tucked away in the corner, a reminder of the modern world. Placing my bag on the floor, I couldn't shake off the eerie sensation of being watched, causing a shiver to run down my spine. Suddenly, a deafening clap of thunder reverberated through the room, startling me. I let out a nervous laugh, realizing it was just my imagination playing tricks on me. Determined to calm my nerves, I decided to indulge in a hot shower. Stepping into the small yet immaculate bathroom, the scorching water cascaded over me, providing a momentary respite. The warmth permeated through my body, offering a soothing relief that eased my worries, if only for a fleeting moment. Stepping out of the shower, a barely audible whisper caught my attention, causing me to freeze in place. Straining to listen, the whisper grew slightly louder, yet the words remained indiscernible. Hastily wrapping a towel around myself, I cautiously opened the bathroom door to find the room empty, leaving me puzzled. Dismissing it as the wind or a figment of my imagination, I swiftly got dressed and decided to embark on a journey to uncover the history of the hotel. The dimly lit and intricate hallways guided me through a maze of antiquated paintings and dusty furniture, piquing my curiosity. Eventually stumbling upon a quaint library adjacent to the lobby, I was greeted by shelves filled with untouched books from decades past. Among them, a particular title stood out, The Haunting of the Ghoul's Inn Hotel. Intrigued, I delved into the mysterious world within the pages, eager to unravel the secrets hidden within the hotel's walls. As I delved into the pages, the hotel's eerie past unfolded before my eyes, revealing a tapestry of vanishing acts, tragic mishaps, and spectral apparitions. 
Amidst these bone-chilling accounts, one particular tale sent shivers cascading down my spine, the haunting legend of Rune 444. According to the ancient chronicle, a young couple had once sought refuge within its walls. Joanna, the ill-fated woman, was discovered lifeless in the bathtub, her visage forever etched in a mask of sheer terror. Henry, her betrothed, mysteriously vanished without a trace. Since that fateful day, both guests and staff have borne witness to whispers that dance upon the air, fleeting shadows that flicker in the corners, and an overwhelming sense of foreboding that permeates the very essence of the room. As I reluctantly closed the book, my hands quivered with trepidation. Though I reassured myself that it was merely a work of fiction, an unsettling unease clung to my thoughts. Seeking solace, I made my way back to my own room, yearning for the solace of slumber to dispel the lingering disquietude that plagued my mind. As I made my way back, the hushed whispers started up again, this time growing louder and more insistent. My heart raced, urging me to pick up my pace. When I finally reached room 404, I was taken aback to find the door slightly ajar. I distinctly remembered closing it before leaving. Summoning my courage, I took a deep breath and pushed the door open, stepping into the darkness. The only source of light was the occasional flash of lightning from the storm outside, casting eerie shadows that danced across the room. I reached for the light switch, but to my dismay, the lights refused to come on. Frustration welled up inside me, and I muttered a curse under my breath as I fumbled for my phone, hoping to use its flashlight function. In the dim glow, I caught sight of a figure standing near the window. My body froze, and my breath caught in my throat. Slowly, the figure turned, revealing a face that was pale and gaunt, with hollow eyes that seemed to pierce through me. Overwhelmed with fear, I stumbled backwards, my grip on the phone slipping, causing it to fall to the ground. In an instant, the figure vanished, leaving me alone in the darkness once more. Frantically scrambling to my feet, I snatched up my phone and bolted out of the room, desperate to escape the clutches of this accursed hotel. With each step, I took down the dimly lit hallway. The sound of heavy and purposeful footsteps echoed ominously behind me, fueling my panic. As I reached the staircase, my heart pounding in my chest, I nearly stumbled in my haste to descend. In the lobby, a disconcertingly composed herald stood by the reception desk, his gaze fixed upon me with an unsettling calmness. Leaving so soon, he inquired, his voice laced with an undertone of foreboding. Without uttering a word, I dashed towards the door and yanked it open, paying no heed to the intensifying storm outside. With the hotel looming behind me like a haunting specter, I sprinted into the pouring rain, determined to put as much distance as possible between myself and that place. After hours of driving, I finally arrived at a quaint little town, feeling utterly drained and drenched from the rain. Seeking refuge, I stumbled into a diner and slumped into a booth, desperate for some warmth and comfort. The waitress, sensing my distress, wordlessly placed a steaming cup of coffee in front of me, offering a silent gesture of solace. As I sipped the coffee, attempting to calm my frayed nerves, I heard faint whispers swirling around me, sending shivers down my spine. Despite the diner being nearly deserted, the whispers seemed to grow louder, filling the air with an eerie presence. Struggling to comprehend the words being murmured, I felt a sense of unease creeping over me. Suddenly, my phone vibrated, jolting me out of my trance-like state. Glancing at the screen, I noticed a notification indicating a new photo in my gallery. With trembling hands, I opened the image, and my heart skipped a beat. The photo depicted me standing in room 444, captured from a corner angle. In the background, barely visible yet chillingly distinct, was the ominous figure by the window, its haunting gaze fixed directly at the camera. The blood drained from my face as a wave of terror washed over me, realizing the gravity of the situation I found myself in. As I gently placed the phone back on its cradle, a shiver ran down my spine. The once faint whispers had transformed into a cacophony of eerie voices echoing through the empty room. They seemed to crawl closer, wrapping around me like a sinister embrace, making it hard to breathe. I had managed to flee from the clutches of the Ghoul's Inn Hotel, but its malevolence had found a way to haunt me even outside its walls. The rain outside intensified, 
pounding against the windows with a relentless fury. Each droplet seemed to carry the weight of the hotel's dark secrets, washing away the evidence of the night's horrors. But as I stood there, trembling, I realized that the rain couldn't cleanse the terror that had seeped into my very soul. The Ghouls Inn Hotel had claimed yet another victim, and its insidious grip tightened around me, suffocating any hope of escape. The nightmarish ordeal had only just begun, and I could feel the presence of the Ghouls Inn Hotel lurking in every shadow. The rain, once a soothing sound, now became a haunting melody that played in harmony with my racing heartbeat. I knew then that I was forever trapped in the clutches of this malevolent place. The horror had become my eternal companion, and there was no escape from its relentless torment. <laughs>